Ladies and gentlemen, it's TBC's studio in a van. Very special guest, uh, Mr. Noah Reed. Welcome to the van. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, folks, Noah is an actor, and he's performing uh, the Cadillac of roles, Hamlet, at the Tarragon Theater. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's fun. We were talking earlier. Yeah. <laughs> before I rolled the camera. <laughs> <laughs> About what a big deal that is. Yeah. And yeah. how does that feel? Well, it feels like uh, you know. Before we started, it felt like it was a uh, uh, quite a quite a mountain to to climb. Um, but it does. I don't know. The, you sort of want to accept these challenges, and and Shakespeare's always been a part of my um, my world. I grew up in High Park and and grew up watching those Shakespeare in High Park. Yeah. yeah. Shows and and there's something magical about that out, outdoor in the park atmosphere. I do too. that every year. It's I, I love so it. great. It's yeah. so great. And you know, like whether or not I understood most of it as an eight-year-old child, I probably didn't. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't. But I, I loved, I loved the worlds that they were creating. I loved the language. Um, you know, it is sort of well, almost it, like a foreign language. You know, absolutely. But it, if it's done well, we can determine as a newbie to Shakespeare what yeah. the intentions are through yeah. the physicality of the actors. For sure, and the music of the the words too. I mean, it's not a direct hit necessarily in the same way that you know you and I are speaking together and we right. understand every word that we're saying but yeah. there are these words in Shakespeare that you know and he, he invented a lot of, a lot of the, the words, words that we use, use right yeah, absolutely um, but a lot of that was sort of like a through a sort of musical sounded out process of what do words sound like the sort of onomatopoeic thing and then yeah. uh, the images that he uses and so all of that is really I, I found exciting as a kid and and as I grew up and and became more interested in performing and I started acting as a kid and uh, and Shakespeare always sort of interested me uh, we'd go to Stratford a bunch of times you know yeah. uh, a year and see shows there and and I always thought it would be so great to do a sword fight on stage so oh man get to do one here and what a wonderful um, sequence that is it's beautiful yeah. you're in and out of uh, real-time motion yeah I can't say too much about it folks you gotta check it out <laughs> uh, running by the way till uh, February 11th that's right yep and uh, you're kind of in the middle of it right now it yeah just yeah. Uh, it's firing on all pistons it feels good you know? yeah, yeah yeah it's interesting to do a run for I mean we've had uh, I guess we had a week of previews and uh, and five weeks of a run in total okay and that's the longest run that I've been a part of since I was in Stra did a season at Stratford in 2009 and yeah. and most of the time in Toronto theaters you get three weeks yeah. four weeks um, so to really have six here is is incredible it's a, you sort of ride the wave and yeah. and sometimes you know you feel like you're right in the pocket and it's all clicking and sometimes you go like where I'm completely lost in this but what happened <laughs> <laughs> but you just sort of trust the work that you've done and the preparation that you've done and and that's when it pays off totally and and you know we have a big cast here so we all sort of lean on each other and in, right. in moments like that you, it's easy to get sort of stuck in your own head and you just have to remind yourself and you know thankfully we've got a, a number of great a great uh, cast incredible cast and and you know people like um, Nigel Sean Williams, Tantu Cardinal, Jack Nicholson, Cliff Saunders. These guys have, have been around they, the they've block. They've done it a bit. And huh? they're like, you know, when I start complaining about something, they're like, yeah, well, what I do is I usually do <laughs> Let this. Let me tell so you like, about oh, back, okay, great. <laughs> back in 85 <laughs> yeah. when I was doing Leah. Yeah, it's very helpful. Not in an imposing way, but just in a sort of uh, team play and kind of way, which mm -hmm. is nice. Um, when I uh, read about the production, I was fearful of kind of a a Rock of Ages version of Hamlet. I was really yep. terrified. Yep. And and quite frankly, when I w walked into the theater, like until we started, I had that fear in the back of my head. Oh, and I'm sure. so glad. It's a legitimate that, fear. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sure. Because I'm not a big musical guy. Yeah. I've done uh, one musical in my life, and I, and I enjoyed it. It was, was fun. It? Uh, it was Spring Awakening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, there was a great story to it. I mean, that's important. And most musicals do have great stories. But, yeah. you know, aside from that, let's talk about the presentation, the genre, the format that yeah. we've packaged Hamlet. Um, and I shouldn't say it that way. It sounds like a commodity. No, that's that's. It's that's really, uh, it's, it's, tell me, energetic. Cause there's a, yeah, it's it, rock. It's, you know? it's electrified. It's, um, it's, uh, so essentially the, uh, the show is is sort of set up like uh, the stage is set up like a like a rock concert, mm -hmm. you know, would be set up 
drum kit, amps, guitars, wireless microphones, you know? RF mics, um, and and we speak the text into into the microphones, and uh, and there's a sort of the cast is comprised largely of, of actor musicians who who play and sort of underscore. They're also good, man. It's yeah, They're, we've got some real great players, yeah. and and. Uh, you know, one of the incredible things is sort of coming together as a band, mm -hmm. um, in addition to as a cast and doing a play. Right, yeah. uh, there was a whole other sort of language that was happening, and a lot of you know you got to be listening to what everybody's doing and keyed in at every point yeah. so that the music's not overriding the text. The text isn't overriding the music. Everything's sort of being blended together. Oh, and so much depends on your crew and lighting and yep. uh, sound engineering. Yeah, uh, totally. And we're very lucky to have, uh, you know, Toronto's preeminent sound designer, Thomas Ryder Payne, who's, mm -hmm. who's with us every night riding the riding the board. And yep. he's, you know, he's making sure the levels are right. And he's making sure that he's, he's even playing with effects and loops and stuff throughout the show. There was no feedback last night. No. <laughs> no, no not one moment. <laughs> not great. one squawk or squeal. No, no, which is incredible because you're, Thomas, you're talking that thing into your sweater at yeah. one point. <laughs> yeah. uh, people are holding them under their arms. Yeah. and the, uh, Very creative and intentional yeah. uses of the microphones, yeah. I might add. But. Yeah, the mic sort of becomes, the way I think of it is it becomes a, a sort of an extension of of your body. It becomes an extension yeah. of your voice. Yeah. And I think for most of us, and certainly for me, uh, I don't think about it. It's it's right. sort of become, it was a, a sort of a clunky beginning in rehearsal because sure. you're like, okay, now I only have one hand to do stuff. <laughs> yeah. But eventually this, it's sort of like a stand-up comedian would use a microphone. Absolutely. You just, you just have it and it becomes a part of your, and sometimes you're off it and sometimes you're on it. Yeah. Um, I was amazed at the, the uses uh, that it had or, or what an extension it became for right. for every actor out there. Yeah, yeah, and I do think that a, a lot of people, a lot of the feedback <laughs> that we've had <laughs> is um, is that people hear the text in a way that they haven't heard before. And yeah. I think, you know, for me as an actor, uh, when you perform in a in a house, even like a you know Tarragon's not a huge space; it's probably two hundred seats. Yeah. But in those big Stratford you know halls or like um, uh, the Princess of Wales or the Royal Alex you gotta lift that text you have to send it to the back wall yeah um, and more and more theaters are using microphones because yeah. people don't know how to do that in the way that they used to know how to do that's right but yeah. for this show we don't have to do that we can drop it right down it can become and you do. very personal and yeah. and that feels almost in a way that film acting can zero in right on right. your face you can do that with a microphone. It, it acts almost as a camera, and breath becomes, you know, audible. I was just going to say that. I noticed the, the breath, yeah, uh, which can really convey and pack in a lot of emotion. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, man, that was powerful. Yeah, so. yeah, it's 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 been a, a really fun and strange world to play in. Yeah, um, and it, you know, the beauty of doing a run that's this long is that we're still discovering stuff, you know, as we go. Moments right. change. Um, you know, little little things will sort of become discovered throughout the run of the show. So Absolutely. it's it's been a lot. And of that's fun. the thrill of it, right? As as an actor, you, yeah. you live for those moments. If, yeah. if if you can really put yourself in the moment, you just let it unfold. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I'm jealous. <laughs> by the way, have you noticed that? Yeah, I have not. You're doing a very good job <laughs> of keeping that under control. The role of Hamlet has been done a million times by a million different people. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes really well, sometimes really poorly. Sure. Was it difficult to not, like, I mean, did you have, like, Kenneth Branagh's image in your mind, or did you have, uh, I don't know, Paul Gross or somebody? How do you shut that out and just let you do your version? Yeah. Was was that a challenge or not? Um, not so much. I, I think, you know, somehow the benefit of there being so many Hamlets is that there's no one defining right you know uh definitive i should say i was really happy you didn't you, I, I was so <laughs> i was so happy you didn't do the blustery patrick stewart's right. version of uh, him not like he would be playing that role these days but uh well no he's a little we, it's it's a great temptation to put the power in your voice and be over the top all right. the time. Yeah, I found maybe and perhaps because of the the, the microphones that we talked about earlier yeah. you were very in in a reflective state often as you know Hamlet probably would be yeah but I think it's easy to that. start to play with Shakespeare especially it's easy to to fall into the trap of playing a, a quality yeah um, 
because often uh, you, if you don't trust that the language is going to be conveyed uh, mm -hmm. or that people aren't going to understand or that you know that if you don't trust that there's emotion within the words uh, then you try to push that and, and put that forward what I felt about Hamlet is that he's he's alone he's isolated and and often I think we see Hamlets because because there are great actors in their 40s and even into their 50s that like want to play the part right. and that have the chops to play the part they get those opportunities yeah. but Hamlet's a young man yeah. uh, and and it's different for a 30 year old to lose his dad than it is for a 45 year old or a 50 year old sure. to lose their dad because yeah. you know you just by the nature of time you have a little bit more of a footing in the world than you do when you're 30 and right. I, I think and often I've seen you know Hamlet's performed very well but I think like wow this, there's so much youth in this character that the the not being sure the trust uh, issues that he has with everyone around him and fair enough I mean he's being lied to he's being manipulated um, but the way that he goes about it and all of the like the the shame and the guilt and the the pain and the not knowing that's a mm -hmm. that's a young yeah thing to, uncontrolled uh, emotion you totally know? yeah yeah so I find that a, a lot of uh, a I'm lot of fun. I'm still like that and I'm, for, I'm 49 <laughs> good man you can play Hamlet <laughs> <laughs> there you go just a little makeup around yeah, the, around yeah, the eyes you don't need it you don't need it <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I just, I, I, I have a lot of fun with, with, um, playing with his, uh, and I think that he's the smartest guy in the room. He uh, sure is. Yeah. And, and it's the most fun. I keep reminding myself, it's the most fun when he's just being a smart ass and, and playing with people. You know, and as I watched last night, you know, and I've seen this play quite a few times, but there's always something new to discover. There's always another layer to peel back with Shakespeare, yeah. as you know, as an actor. But as as an audience member, as somebody who just enjoys the story, I was blown away last night, not by this 2-2 solid flesh and, and all those big moments, which are great, and mm. they always will be, and, and well done, by the way, because those, <laughs> those are big, fat <laughs> parts to, to, to fill. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the banter with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern and the wittiness with... Um, Popularities. I'm sorry. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, Polonius. Thank yeah. you, Polonius. <laughs> uh, it's. I really enjoyed those parts. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not like they didn't exist before, but I mean, you certainly did a great job at bringing them to light uh, for me last night. And, it's fun. Uh, it's fun. I, 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 I remind myself it's the most effective when I'm having fun with it because I think right. he's having fun with it. I think yeah. He's like. That's the only thing he can have fun with at this stage of the game. That's okay. the only part of his world that he can control. Is right. His. If people are trying to manipulate him, okay, well, do your best. Yeah. But I'm smarter than you. Yeah. I'm funnier than you, and I will beat you at your own game. That's yeah. that's the joy. That's the only joy left for him. Right. You know. I think so. It's uh, that's a fun and tragic. And and I think the that's where the emotion comes from too. It's like the uh, there's so many things in this play that are like the the polar opposites become the same thing so laughter mm -hmm. and and tears become sure. the same thing hope and doubt yeah. become very closely linked and of course these things are because they're they're sort of at opposite ends but they're 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 also circular and they, and they come they right back other, on right? each other and yeah. often we find ourselves crying and then suddenly right into laughter because yeah. the futility of it all yeah exactly know? yeah we yeah. should write a play we should be we, we should, should get together we should write hamlet man <laughs> oh it's already been <laughs> oh. done Unfortunately, um, is there? Here's a big question, and it's been asked before, but I would like to hear your take on it. Is there a method to Hamlet's madness? It sounds like yes, according to what we were just talking about. Well, I think that in that sort of circular world of opposites meeting, uh, we had a student matinee yesterday, and and one of the teachers asked that question. Was like, is he, is he mad or is he putting it on? And that's one of the things that actors who play this part sort of have to figure out how they want to approach that. Um, for me, I, I've, my take on it was that he he goes he goes mad seeing the ghost. He gets he gets high off of that ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a that's a moment that really sort of rattles his cage. Mm -hmm. And seeing Horatio and Marcellus when they find him after the ghost has told him everything that he tells him, mm -hmm. uh, their reaction to him makes him realize that if he's being lied to then their their reaction right there they can't fake that 
No, that's true. That's honest. Yeah. So in a way, the best way to ascertain who's being honest and who's lying is to be crazy. And then you see what people are really like. Right. So, but he only gets that idea by actually being crazy. So he sort of... He has fits. Is crazy. Yeah. Goes crazy. Uh, then decides to use that yeah. to play crazy. I think that there are moments where I feel more mad than others. Mm -hmm. But generally, I think later in the play, when I feel the least mad, certainly probably when I'm the most mad. Right, you know? yeah. Uh, certainly with, with the scene with Polonius and uh, the battle of uh, wits there, the fishmonger scene. Yeah, yeah. There's a method. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, the multi-talented cast, musicians, actors, uh, people who are probably in bands, yourself, are you a musician? I am. Yeah. 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 And, and what do you like to do? Um, I've, I've been writing songs for a long time. I uh, recorded my first album few years ago 2015 released in 2016 uh, it's called songs from a broken chair and uh, yeah it's sort of folky rocky bluesy type uh, ballady type stuff nice it's fun you know it's just some it's another form of telling stories and the sort of the tradition of those guys Leonard Cohen and Love Dylan Leonard. and Waits and those guys it's 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 another form of storytelling that feels interesting to me and nice. and I've, I love music I love playing uh, and this cast is full of guys who, who have their own sort of outfits. They're good. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> this is the moment where we get together, you right, and I. Yeah, right. um, we'll have to invite you back to do some music. Would love to. For a studio and event. Would love to. Um, yeah. Listen, uh, Noah, thanks so much. And congratulations on uh, an ongoing production that uh, I think is wonderful. And I really enjoyed myself last night. Great. And I enjoyed this time together uh, talking all things Shakespeare and Hamlet. Uh, continued success to you in the future. Thanks, man. And uh, folks, Hamlet runs at the Tarragon Theater until February 11th. That's right. And uh, come on down. I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's uh, definitely a fresh approach to a play that has been performed for hundreds of years. So best to you. Thanks, man. You too. You too.